few months ago, I started seeing ads for the Yamaha EAD-10, a new electronic percussion gadget. It seemed kind of hard to define, but instantly I started trying to think of ways that it could be used in the teaching studio. EAD is code for the Electronic Acoustic Drum Module, a system that consists of a sensor unit and of an electronic drum brain that Yamaha refers to as the main unit. The unique portion of this setup is the sensor unit, housed in a heavy-duty cube and consisting of a stereo microphone and a drum trigger. It kinda looks like a Borg cube. Resistance is futile. This unit clips to the bass drum, which places the microphone centrally to the kit, as well as activating the trigger when the bass drum is played. The sensor is connected to the back panel of the main unit via a set of stereo cables. The sensor is not the only trigger the main unit can handle, as it has expansion for a snare trigger and even two Yamaha DTX pads. Also here on the back panel is an aux in connection and the main outs. There is also a jack for a foot switch, which depending on the type can turn the unit on or off, control the volume, or trigger sounds. As for the USB ports, we'll come back to those later. The front panel consists of a display, a handful of control buttons, and six control knobs. The main unit processes the signals in settings known as scenes. The three components of each scene are the triggered sounds, the effects, and the reverb. The balance of each is easily controlled by knobs labeled for each of those. The other knobs on the front are the scene knob, used to easily switch between the scenes, the audio slash click knob, used to adjust the overall volume of other audio and the built-in metronome, and the master volume knob. Yamaha has included 50 pre-programmed scenes, but has left 200 user slots for customizable settings. The main unit comes equipped with a multitude of kick and snare samples already in it, as well as many other sounds. In total, it comes loaded with 757 samples, but if none of those are to your liking, you can import up to 100 of your own through the USB port on the back. A thoughtful feature is separating the idea of effects from reverb. This allows the user to shape the tone of their mix with the effects before putting it into a space with the reverb. There are 21 separate available effects for the microphone and 10 trigger effects. These range from simple compression to distortion, modulation, phasers, wahs, and tempo-dependent delays. There are also 11 separate reverbs built into the unit. Many, if not most, private instructors that teach out of a studio have to teach on a kit that has been muffled in some way. These are, of course, unideal conditions pedagogically because it creates an unrealistic situation in where the student misses out on the tone and dynamics of the drum set. They learn all of the coordination, but none of the sound or feel. One of the first things that intrigued me about the EAD-10 was the possibility that it could give some life to a muffled kit. When testing the EAD-10, I wanted to show a large amount of possibilities in the most efficient way possible. This is because I wanted to show you more of what it could do, instead of giving a recommendation on what I think is best. For many in a muffled kit teaching situation, particularly those housed in a music store, equipment may be provided for the teacher and thus they may not have the option to change it. This was my situation when I taught in a store for many years. For others that provide their kit, changing the setup to the setup I recommend may not work for them or could be an expensive jump, particularly if they're already thinking about adding a $500 electronic drum setup on top of it all. To do this, I created a jelly bean kit of typical muffling situations. For cymbals, I used a 20-inch ride muffled with a sim guard, a 16-inch L80 crash, and 14-inch L80 hi-hats. I put a Remo silent stroke mesh head on my 13-inch tom and a 16-inch sound off on my floor tom. The kick I just stuffed full with a heavy blanket. Admittedly, it comes off a little louder than it probably would, but sometimes that's the muffling situation you have. I tried a bunch of different options on the snare drum. I tried a sound off, a real feel pad, an Aquarian super pad, a Sabian quiet tone, and a Remo silent stroke on a piccolo snare. Yamaha also sent along a DTS-50 snare trigger to test with the EAD-10, so I tried that with all of the snare options but the super pad and the real feel pad as it would not clip onto those. What follows is a sampling of different scenes from the EAD-10 on the Jelly Bean muffling setup. First you will hear the EAD-10 on its own, then the live room, and then a mix of the two.
Given the option between teaching on a muffled kit and an electronic kit, I tend to choose the muffled kit as I find the electronic kit is often a distraction to students. Even if I keep the setup and sounds used conservative, the novelty never seems to wear off and it never really feels like we're playing drums. The EAD-10 offers a nice balance in between these worlds. It gives a little more life to that muffled kit while not betraying what your eyes are seeing by outputting a sound that is completely foreign to the instrument you are playing. The sound is at the very least created and mixed from the initial sound. Even if there are sampled sounds involved, the original sound is still in the mix. The EAD-10 is well set up to take the place of other sound reinforcement solutions you may have used previously in lessons. The EAD-10 excels at being simple, yet giving you the needed controls. If you've only used a boombox or Bluetooth speaker before, this gives you an easy way to have much better control of levels and mixing. If you had a full-on mixer setup, this simplifies that setup into what you need and gets rid of the things you don't. The control dials on the front of the unit make mixing quick and easy, yet there's also depth for tweaking within the internal menus of the main unit. A really useful feature for teaching with the EAD-10 is the internal recorder. This allows you to capture either its internal audio or audio from the auxiliary in. Most of us stream music these days, so the aux in capture is probably not as useful, but where it could be used is to capture audio off of the student's phone. That way you don't have to be leashed to their phone and you can control it from the EAD-10 yourself. But what I like to use the internal recording for is to record a student while they play along with the song and then let them listen back without the background track. This gives the student invaluable and honest feedback about how they sound when they don't have another player propping up their performance. The EAD-10 will connect to the Yamaha Rec and Share app. This is actually one of the features they've been promoting the biggest across social media. This will allow you to use your smartphone or tablet to create videos using that device's camera and the audio from the EAD-10. Now, I don't see this necessarily as a great use for an individual lesson. Not that it couldn't be used that way, but to do so takes a fair amount of setup time when compared to the length of a standard lesson. That being said, if you plan to do it often, you could set yourself up in a way to make it quicker and easier to do. To connect a mobile device to your EAD-10, you will need a camera converter appropriate to that device, and most likely a USB A to B cable as well. You will also need some sort of mount or at least a place to secure your device in a location to give you a shot that is both appropriate and looks good. This can be harder than it looks. I don't have a mount for my iPad, so to get this shot, I just put it on a stand in front of my kit. I think a better use of the connectability of the EAD-10 to the Rec and Share app for teachers is that it's an easy way to create good looking and sounding videos for your students to learn from. As a teacher, you can create an example for your student and then send it to them through your device, whether it be to a social media site like YouTube or your Facebook lessons page, or a more direct way by email or text. My initial interest in the EAD-10 was solely to see if it could help add more life to a muffled drum set in the teaching studio. It does that, though not as much as I was originally hoping it would. To be honest, what I was hoping for was that it would take the muffled kit and make it sound unmuffled. And of course the only way to do that is to unmuffle the kit in the first place. Nonetheless, it certainly does improve the sound and feel of a muffled kit, and I would definitely recommend it to anybody trying to do that. What I was surprised at was how much I liked using the EAD-10 for other aspects of teaching. Having extra sounds or just different sounds caused my students to listen more to what they were doing and how the way they played affected the outcome of their sound. The recording feature has come in quite useful for capturing student performance and was much quicker to access than pulling out my phone to do it. And while I am happy with my own video recording setup, if I did not have an interest in creating high-end video content and I was looking for a good-looking, good-sounding, easy solution to creating content for my students, the EAD-10 would be a no-brainer. 
I think most of all, I would recommend the EAD-10 to those who are looking for an all-around audio solution. The easy ability to mix in music with high-quality drum sound and keep it all contained within simple controls that also have a deep level of customization is great, and honestly, was not something I was expecting when I started working with the EAD-10. It's a very elegant solution to the studio problem. At $500 street price, the EAD-10 can't be called inexpensive. To purchase one, you are making an investment. But I think Yamaha would be justified in asking a higher price for all of the equipment and development that is in this product. For that price, I did not expect the amount of controls, samples, and settings that come with it. I essentially expected a plug-and-play device that kind of worked one way. What I got was a fully developed product with a lot of depth and thought put into giving the user many options. I think if the EAD-10 offers the solutions you are looking for, it is worth every penny. What did I miss? How would you or are you using the EAD-10 in lessons that I haven't thought of? What other technological marvels are you using in your lessons? Let us know by leaving a comment below or sending us a tweet at MusiciansNotes with the hashtag TNT. Other than that, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Let's hit it.